Amen. Well, today, I'm excited to continue our series on prayer. It is 21 days of prayer and fasting, as you know. And last week, we started a series, Teach Us to Pray. And we are looking at the Lord's Prayer. Because, you know, the disciples in Luke chapter 11, one of the disciples asked Jesus, hey, we see your life, we see your life of prayer and the way that, that the way you operate and the way that you pray for people, they're healed. We, we see that you get alone with the Father all the time to be in prayer. And, and then they asked, teach us to pray. How do you do it? Teach us to pray. And, and it's my prayer desire that during these 21 days of prayer and fasting that we would all have that same heart that we would come before the Lord in this season, asking him, teach us to pray. And whether you uh, have never prayed before, whether you're somewhere in the middle or you've been praying for decades, God has something to teach you in this season in prayer. He wants to take you deeper in prayer. And we talked last week about how prayer is bigger than just asking, bigger than, um, bigger than a discipline. It is our entire life with God. Okay? And it begins as we approach him in the Lord's prayer. It begins, our father in heaven, holy is your name. And we approach the Lord. We come before God to know him and love him first before we ask for anything. And, and the, the, the idea last week, kind of the synthesis, the main idea was, was this, the approach. And it's on that slide, to be with, the approach, to be with Love, and it's not on a slide, it's okay. To, the, <laughs> there it is. There. I gave up too soon. I'm sorry, Grace. The approach to be with, love, and enjoy God, humbly surrendering to his plans, your kingdom come, your will be done, before we ask for anything. We approach God for God to love him and to know him, to be with him. And so that was our first message that's available online. If you missed it, I'd encourage you to check it out. But we're continuing to study the Lord's Prayer, and today's word is ask. Ask, okay? There, there's three words, approach, ask, and then next week is allow. Everybody say it with me. Approach, ask, allow. Now say it like you mean it. Approach, ask, allow, okay? Triple A. Um, Today we're talking about asking, and it is one of the most important aspects of prayer. And I really think it's what we think of when we think of prayer, for the most part, is asking God for uh, our needs and for others. And so let's continue reading the Lord's Prayer, picking up where we left off last week in verse 10. And read it along with me. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And we're going to stop there. And so these two pieces, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a form of asking. That's, that's intercession. That is asking that God's will would be done on this earth and in the lives of others. It's praying for other people. And then you have, uh, give us today our daily bread. Give me, I need, I have needs, God, and I need you to take care of me. I need you to provide for me. That's petition. That's, that's praying for yourself, asking for you. But sometimes if we're honest, as we talk about asking the Lord in prayer, sometimes we overcomplicate things, I think, a little bit. I think we overcomplicate things in prayer sometimes. That we, we, we overthink it. Is anybody with me on that? Like, we overthink prayer. Oh, I don't know if I should say that or I can't. Uh, uh, God's busy. You know, there's, that's my problem's not that important. I don't know. And we overthink it. I have a fun illustration uh, or example to illustrate this. I have in my... My hands are crisp, clean, beautiful, 2017, $10 bill, all right? It's really quiet. I started talking about money. It's like silent. All right. Because we're a fun church, you know someone's about to get $10, okay? Um, but I'm going to play a little game with you, okay? It's kind of like a puzzle almost. And if you're in the youth group and you heard me do this last year, you don't count. Don't spoil it. Don't do anything. Um, but we're going to play a little game. There's a puzzle that you need to figure out. It's pretty simple. But put your thinking cap on. Because the person who figures it out gets to walk away with this $10 bill. This is a game changer. 
This is a game changer, $10. Okay. This $10, here it is, is for the first person that can get it from me without leaving their seat. Alec. Alec. Uh, yeah, I can. Actually, Jared can give it to you. I respect the hand, the hand raise. I wanted you to shout it out, but that's it. Good job. Guess what? He said, he, he raised his hand and he said, can you give me the $10? And that was it. That was it. No, no deeper thread. No, nothing. Ask and you will receive. And sometimes, I know some people, if you're like me, if I was out in the audience and I had no clue what the person was talking about, I'd probably be like doing arithmetic or geometry or something. I'd be like, is there a way in the room that I can somehow get there with it's, These things are bolted to the floor, right? Like we overthink it. We're like, ah, I don't know. And a lot of us approach prayer the same way. We were like, man, there's got to be, there's an angle, there's a thing. But, and we talk ourselves out of it so often. And, and when you read scripture and you read Jesus' teaching on prayer, he keeps it real simple. Ask and you'll receive. It's simple. We just have to open our mouths and ask. And what we have to gain is a lot better than $10, okay? Now, Alec, you have to take me out for coffee with that $10, Okay. <laughs> which I would love to. Um, we, we, need to, we need to be careful that we don't overcomplicate things. And we remember, right? God is our father, our father in heaven. And we approach our father as children. And he says to us, hey, what do you need? Ask me and I will give it to you. Asking needs to become a natural part of our life with him. Now, I'm going to say this phrase, and it's going to go up on the screen, and it's going to come up a lot, and I want this to get embedded in your soul today. Don't be afraid to ask. That's what I want us to walk away with today as we talk about prayer and we talk about asking, that, that at the end of the day, we might not have the technique just right, we might not have all the right words, we might not have it all figured out, but at the end of the day, what I want you to walk away with is that you're not afraid to ask and that it's in your soul as you live your life, that as you go through situations, that you have confidence to ask God what you need. Amen? In chapter seven of Matthew, it's right after the Lord's prayer, Jesus says this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And he says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. That's a pretty crummy thing to do. And he says, if you then, though you're evil, could you imagine Jesus is standing there to this crowd? And he's like, you guys, you're evil. You're the worst. But you don't do that, right? He says, no, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? How much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him, how much more? And Jesus's point is this, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. If you actually study Jesus' teaching on prayer in the gospels, you will find the strongest theme, the strongest theme or, the, or, or one word that you could sum it all up in is that word, ask. Over and over, Jesus encourages us and calls us to ask. Ask and you'll receive. It seems like Jesus' greatest concern when teaching us to pray is that we don't miss an opportunity to ask the Father. He didn't so much teach on reasons why prayers don't get answered, and I'll give you a plug here. Episode four of the Prayer Problems podcast coming out this Friday is why does God not answer my prayers? It's gonna be good. Um, but if you look at his teaching, he didn't really go into that too much. He also didn't talk about just how to improve your technique and get all the right words and all this stuff. Even the Lord's prayer is short and sweet. He's like, just pray this. 
His emphasis overall was that we would learn to ask God to come to him often and rely upon him. Between John chapter 14 and John chapter 16, five times Jesus promises this. He says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it for you. Five times he throws this out there. Hey, guys, whatever you ask, ask, ask in my name, I'll do it for you. The only way to not receive is to not ask. In Jesus' mind, asking God is so important that he would even rather ask, um, rather that you ask poorly than not ask at all. He'd rather that you'd come with the messiest, sloppiest, worst prayer of all time than to not pray at all. There's a story in Luke chapter 18 where, where Jesus talks, he tells a story of a Pharisee and a tax collector. And I'd encourage you to read the whole thing um, at home. But there's two people, they couldn't be more different. The Pharisee was the religious expert. He was like, you know, the, the, the guy, he should know how to pray, right? And then you have the tax collector who was the, the worst member of society, was, was usually Jewish and had betrayed their own people to extort funds out of them, okay? Do we like that guy? I don't think so. And so Jesus was pitting them against each other here in prayer. And in this story, he says, so a Pharisee and a tax collector walk into a temple. And I kind of, it sounds like that joke to me. It's like a Pharisee and a tax collector walk into a bar, okay? Um, that's, what, that's what I think when I read that. I'm like, it's like some kind of joke Jesus is setting up here. And, um, but so these two guys, very different, walk into a temple. And again, to the original audience and to our mind today, you know, um, Sub, sub uh, Pharisee for pastor and sub um, tax collector for career criminal, okay? We look at the two and we think they're going into a church. Who's going to pray a prayer that God's going to like? Well, that pastor, he's got a, he knows God. But Jesus, he tells this story. He says the Pharisee goes in and he's praying. He stands up and he's all oh, da, 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 da. And it's like, and he's, he's got this epic prayer, and he even bashes the tax collector in the prayer. He's like, I'm glad I'm not like one of these tax collectors, Lord, and I know you, God, and thank you, amen. And then the tax collector comes in, and I could imagine the, the fear, the trembling that this tax collector must have felt after seeing this Pharisee, the man of God, praying, and now he's coming in to approach God like, I don't have what he has to give, and I don't know... And, and whatever he did, he got over that hump and he comes before the Lord and he beats his chest and he cries out, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me. He beats his chest. He's like, it was real to him. He was, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And then Jesus says, I'll tell you this, the tax collector is the one who went home justified. And what's that mean? It means that the tax collector asked and he received. The Pharisee, the tax collector had a, had a messy, sloppy way of coming in, a messy prayer, but it was real. And he asked and, and Jesus said, that's the one who God heard. And I'm telling you today, don't be afraid to ask. You may feel like, I don't know how to pray. I don't, I'm not good enough. I can't, I, I'm not holy enough. I'm not this or that. Don't be afraid to ask. God wants to hear your prayers. He wants you to talk to him. Remember, in the Lord's Prayer, we begin our Father in heaven. And because God is our good Father, how much more can we have confidence to ask him his biggest concern is that you ask. You see, I have a daughter that's a year and a half old. Her name is Abigail, and I hope she's watching. Liv is home with the sniffles. Um, but when Abigail asks me for something, since she's a year and a half, um, a year and a half years old, <laughs> um, she can't say all the words right. Does anybody know any little kids? You know what I'm saying? She's starting to get a lot of words and starting to figure a lot of things out. 
But there are plenty of times where she comes to me as her father and she asks me for something. She has a need and she can't form the words, okay? Aside from being the cutest thing ever, um, as her father, I know what she needs and I don't turn her away because she didn't get it quite right. I, I, I hear what she's saying. I, I hopefully I'm, see, I'm limited. Sometimes I don't understand and mom knows better than I do. But um, I'm like, hey, I love you and I'm gonna take care of you and I'm gonna give you what you need, not because you ask just right, but because you're my child and I love you. And it's the same way with God. You might not have your prayers formulated just right and it might come out like some sad little, uh, you know, but it doesn't matter. God knows what you need. Multiple times in scripture, in the New Testament, the Bible clearly says, your father in heaven knows what you need even before you ask it. And he gives us what we need. See, you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to worry about it. Just don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. With Jesus' invitation to ask, we need to develop a, a habit of praying first, of asking the Lord for help. You know, before you go to the bank and try to refinance, ask God for help. Before you try to figure out that family situation that you have no clue how to make it better, ask God for help. Before you get to the doctor's appointment, ask God for help. Before you have that conversation, ask God for help. Before we make decisions that impact our child's life, ask God for help. And we could go on for all day. Before you do something, before you make a decision, when things are tough, stop and ask God for help. And if you don't know the right words to say, you have no idea what to pray, there's an easy four-letter prayer, and I think you might have already got caught in wind of it. It's, it's H-E-L-P, help. I had a professor in Bible college who said, like, that's his favorite prayer, help. Why? Because it kind of sums it up. I'm not God. And I'm coming before God, the king of the universe, and he is able. Help. And he knows what you need. And he's going to help you. Back to the Lord's Prayer. This is the life of prayer that Jesus is encouraging us to develop when he says, give us this day our daily bread. Notice he doesn't say pray for your weekly bread or your monthly bread. He doesn't say, come to me and ask for help. And, and, and we come to him and we pray, God, give me everything I need this year and I'll see you in 2024. <laughs> no, that's not the way that prayer works. That's not the relationship. See, that's not a relationship. And God's inviting us into a relationship with our heavenly father. We're his children and we need daily bread. And that means we need to pray daily for our everyday needs, that we need to come to God and depend upon him, that we would build up a dependency, that, that, we, would, that we would recognize our deep need, okay? Again, God is God. We are not. We are limited. We deeply need God every day. We learn to develop a dependency upon him as we pray and as we we ask, give us today our daily bread. Just don't be afraid to ask. All right, I'm gonna shift gears here now for a minute. We're gonna talk about intercession. Um, like I said, there's kind of two pieces to asking here. There's asking for yourself and then asking for others on behalf of others uh, about situations and things. Um, petition is praying for yourself, asking God, I need help with this, I need this. And then you intercede when you hold a situation before God or a person before God until his will is done, okay? Because it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and that is intercession, okay? It is coming before God, and I just love this picture of holding something before him until his will is done. See, when you pray for your family and you're like, God, they're really frustrating me and make them do this, that's not intercession. That's called controlling, 
okay? Intercession is, God, I really need a, an angle here, Lord. What, what do you want to do in their lives? What's your will? What do you want to form in them, birth in them? How do you want to make them look like Christ? And you hold them there. You hold them in prayer until you begin to see his will done in their lives. That's the same if we pray for our nation, if we pray for our community. We're holding it before God to see his kingdom come and his will be done. And this is key. You need to understand this. Your prayers really do make a difference. Your prayers really do make a difference. You know, it may be easy to say, well, it's as a discipline. I pray, you know, my prayers every night and I pray like this, this and this and boom. And, and we kind of just do it out of obligation and we like it's a, to be a good Christian. I'm, I'm doing this. But no, your prayers really do make a difference. If Jesus tells us to pray, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, he means it. He believes that it's possible. He believes that if we pray, some things will happen. If we don't, some things won't. And your prayers really do make a difference. Don't belittle your prayers. Don't belittle what you can do through prayer because God is calling you and he is asking you to come before him and, 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 and hold up the things all around you and to ask that his kingdom would come and his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your prayers can actually change reality. And it's in intercession that we look beyond our own needs and desires. And again, we grab a hold of people and situations and we don't let go until God's will is done. If you look in the gospels for pictures of intercession, the first one is very, very interesting. And again, I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to give us a heart and a picture of looking beyond ourselves to pray for others. In Matthew chapter five, this is very challenging. Verse 43, this is right before the Lord's prayer in chapter six. Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Isn't that easy? I, I, I love to hate my neighbor. Or hate, or hate, no, wait. No, I love to hate my enemies. We all love to hate our enemies. Ah! This just in, Pastor Andrew hates his neighbors. <laughs> Most of my neighbors are woods, so that's a good thing. That's it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to start from scratch. Verse 43, please. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. And now here it is, verse 44. But I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And he says that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the, on the, the unjust. See, intercession is an expression of, your, of the father's heart and love and will towards others. And Jesus calls us to even pray for our enemies and our persecutors. And even when you don't want to ask, uh, wave at me if there's anything in your life where you're like, I don't even want to ask, okay? I got a little wave, right? Like there's these challenges or these obstacles or these frustrations or these, they're like, well, they were mean to me. I really don't want to bless them in prayer. You know, I really don't want to lift them up in prayer. Like, ah, God actually calls us to intercede, to pray, even for our enemies, for those who actively are persecuting us and hurting us. We're called to, to pray for our enemies. We're called to prefer others' interests before ourselves. That's in Philippians chapter two, that we would live a life where we're looking for needs and places to be a blessing. We're called to pray for other ministries and missionaries all over the world. We're called to intercede and pray for justice for the oppressed and to transform uh, um, systems and governments. And we're called to intercede for our leaders in our governments. We're called to intercede for our friends, neighbors, and family. We're called to pray until the Lord's will is done in us, but not only in us, around us. We're called to intercede and to ask. This can be a picture of prayer that's a little more intense sometimes than uh, acute bedtime prayer, okay? 
It's not like, oh, whatever happens, oh, oh, it's okay, amen. You are grabbing a hold. I want you to really get a picture of you grab a hold. I really feel like that's the, that's the heart of, uh, of intercession is like, I'm grabbing a hold of this, Lord, and I want to see your kingdom come and your will be done. It's not exactly casual. It's, it's a little bit more, oh God, I want to see, Lord, my, 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 my friend, he, he needs you, God. He's far from you. You need us, God, I, and you're grabbing a hold of it until you see it happen. But I have to say this. This is something that's big on my heart. Don't let style and personality trip you up when it comes to prayer. Sometimes we look at a person. I'm a charismatic person, and and I'll just talk. Give me a microphone. I'll just talk all day. And when I pray, I can just let her rip, okay? Is there anybody in this place that's not like that? Yeah, hello, right? We have different personalities and ways that God has wired us. And just because I get up on the stage and I start shouting, ah, and that's good for me, God may not have wired you that way. He may lead you to pray that way. But I don't want you to compare yourself and say, I'm not good at prayer because I'm not like them. No, what's the model? Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God might lead you to cry and shed tears as you're interceding, or he might not. He might cry, call you to shout and to holler, or he might not. I remember the most powerful, one of the most powerful prayers I've ever heard in my life. I was in college at Valley Forge Christian College. We were in a special chapel. It was a prayer meeting at the start of the semester, and, and many different people were getting up and leading in prayer. And there was this Ukrainian brother who stands up and he was like, he had this, he had a thick accent. It was almost, it was, it was kind of hard to even understand what he was saying, but he began to pray and it was humble, calm. It was even keeled, if that word makes sense to you. There was no pop or fanfare. He was even hard to understand, but he's just like, Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. And and he was just praying just like that. And I tell you what, the whole place was like, Lord, we were all moved. And God showed up and God did a mighty thing. Why? Because it's the heart. And God calls us to ask. So don't let style trip you up and point at a person on a stage with a microphone and say, I'm not like them. I'm never going to be good at prayer. No. No. God's called all of you to ask. God's called all of you to pray. And, all of you, and, and your prayers do make a difference. I don't get bonus power or credit on my prayers because I'm a pastor either. Your prayers make a difference. And the only thing stopping them is you. You need to ask and open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Amen. Each and every one of us can make a difference through prayer. Your prayers really do work and they really do make an impact. Don't be afraid to ask. So that's my question. We're coming to a close and we're actually gonna take a few minutes at the end of this service to pray, to intercede. Because the best way to learn to pray is to pray. It's kind of like riding a bike, right? You don't stare at a bike and study a bike and then read books about a bike and you're like, all right, I can ride a bike now. Here we go. No, you, you get on a bike and you fall over. You look like an idiot and then you get up again and you try again and then you get the hang of it. Same thing with prayer. But my question to you today is, are you asking God on a regular basis? Have you made it part of your lifestyle to ask God for help and to help others? Have you made it part of your DNA, part of the way you live your life that I'm going to ask God? You may not have all the right words. You may not have it all figured out, but I guarantee you this. If you make it your habit, you make it your lifestyle that you turn to the Lord and you ask him for help and you ask often, God is going to work in your life. He's going to change things around you. But the problem is we're afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. For the biggest problems you've ever faced, don't be afraid to ask. For the littlest things that you don't even want to bother God about, don't be afraid to ask. For the family issue you can't figure out, don't be afraid to ask. For the financial problems that are keeping you up at night, don't be afraid to ask. 
in the hardest times and the best of times, don't be afraid to ask. And families, if you have kids in your house right now, I'd encourage you, don't be afraid to ask together. Don't be afraid to make it a habit that around the dinner table, around breakfast, or whenever you can gather together, that you take time to ask God as a family, that you build it into your your lifestyle, into the way your family works. Make prayer a daily thing and a family thing. We can't be afraid to ask. I want you to think about this. The God of the universe, all-powerful and able, your father, he says, ask and you'll receive. We would be crazy not to take him up on that. We would be crazy not to even try. Ask and you'll receive. Don't be afraid to ask. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. I'm just going to real quickly remind us of what's happening with 21 days of prayer and fasting. And then we're going to take a few minutes to pray through some of the prayer points that we've been praying this week. So God, I just thank you for every person that is here this morning, Lord. I ask that you'd help us to depend upon you, to rely upon you, to make asking you part of our life, the way we live our lives, Lord, that we depend upon you for our daily bread, Lord God, that we depend upon you for our families and for, for our nation, Lord God, that you would just, uh, you would stir our hearts, God, to prayer, to, to give us the confidence to ask you and to seek you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord, give us confidence, stir us to prayer, Lord, help each of us to ask and do not be afraid to ask, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So again, 21 days of prayer and fasting is continuing this week. Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. on Facebook Live. Again, if you want to learn how to ask, if you want to grow in prayer, that's what we're doing. We are praying. We are asking. And you grow by praying. You grow in prayer by praying. So join us for that on Facebook. The link is on the website. Um, We have prayer in person only on Friday nights at 7 p.m. And that is our one big prayer gathering that we are doing each week during the 21 days of prayer. So I encourage you to join us for that as well. And don't forget about the pantry this Saturday because that's an opportunity to help the community. But also there's lots of opportunities for prayer. When you're out there and serving people and meeting people and getting to know people, you'll find plenty of opportunities to pray for others. And again, the Prayer Problems podcast is available at victoryaog.org slash podcast. I encourage you to check it out. Um, It's a good way to help learn and grow a little bit more if you have some questions or problems. And again, um, later this week, there's going to be an episode called My Prayers. Why doesn't God answer my prayers? And we just wrapped up um, an episode on I don't know what to pray. So both very helpful um, if you are trying to grow and asking the Lord. Amen. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to take a few minutes to pray. And I want to encourage you that this is a prayer meeting now. It's officially a prayer meeting. This is not Sunday morning church anymore. This is a prayer meeting. And um, you're not a spectator. You're not here to watch me pray. I'm going to lead us in prayer. But I want to encourage you in whatever way you know how, whatever way you can, that you pray along with me. And we're going to have these points that are going to come on the screen. And we're going to pray those points. And then we're going to move to the next one. We have a few points to pray this morning. But again, you grow in prayer by praying. And so don't be afraid to ask. Okay? So number one. Well, first, Father, we just commit this time to you, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come before you, Father. We love you. We give you glory and honor and praise. We worship you, Lord. There's no one like you, God. Lord, And we ask that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father. That you'd give us today our daily bread and everything that we need, Lord. Nothing that we don't. God, we just thank you for this time. Lord, and we come before you now, Lord. 
And first, God, we pray for our family, friends, and our neighbors, asking for your blessing and favor, God. Lord, we thank you for our families. And God, we just ask that you would bless them and keep them. Lord, that you would strengthen them and fill them with your spirit, that you would just use our homes to be places of love and joy and peace. Lord God, I'm asking for hard situations, Lord, that we don't know how to figure out. Lord, I'm asking that you would bring the solution in Jesus' name. I'm asking for parents, for mothers and fathers, for wisdom, God, that you would give wisdom, Lord, for every parent that needs wisdom, God. We lift our families up to you right now in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we ask, God, that you would bless them, Lord. We pray for our friends, Lord, that you would bless our friends, Lord God, that you would lead us into healthy relationships this year, that you would just do a great work through our friendships, Lord. God, we lift up our physical neighbors to you, the people to our left and our right and in front and behind us, God. We ask that you would bless them in Jesus' Jesus name, that you would do a great work in them, Lord God, this year, that you would show them your kindness and your love and your favor, Lord. If there's any of our neighbors that don't know you, God, I'm asking that you would use us as lights into their lives, Lord, to reveal Christ, that you would give them soft hearts ready to receive, Lord, your love and your grace, God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Number two is pray for your workplace co-workers and leaders. Ask that God would use you to share his love and grace in that place. Each one of us has already been called into our workplaces. And if you don't have a job and need a job, take this time right now and ask the Lord to open a door. And so, Father, we thank you, God, for every workplace represented here. We thank you, God. And just call out your workplace by name as you're praying and, and your bosses and your co-workers. And God, we just thank you for our workplaces. And we ask that you would just do a great work in them and through them, Lord. We we ask that you would pour out your spirit in our workplaces, that you would just make them places for your glory, God, that you would get glory, God, when, every time we go to work, Lord. God, I'm asking for company owners and bosses, Lord, that you would turn their hearts towards you, that you would stir their hearts, Lord, to love you and know you. Father, that you'd fill them with grace and with peace and that our, our jobs, Lord God, would just represent your kingdom, Lord, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done in our workplaces, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we're asking that you would do a great work, Lord. Father, I'm asking for every person that needs a job in this place, Lord God. Lord, I'm asking for open doors and opportunities, Lord, that you would provide the opportunity in Jesus' name as we trust in you, Lord, that you would provide every dollar and, and, and everything that is needed in the meantime, Lord God. Father, I'm asking for just increase, for opportunity, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Number three, pray for the poor, the mistreated and abused in our community. Ask that God would bring justice quickly to the oppressed. Lord, we just pray for the poor, Lord God. We ask, Lord, we pray for Bridgeton, Lord. It's triple the national poverty rate. And we pray, God, for those in Bridgeton, Lord, that are just so deeply in need, God. We pray for those in our, in our surrounding areas, God, that are so deeply in need. And we ask, Lord, that you would provide everything that is needed for families, for little kids, Lord, that don't have meals, God. We ask that you provide everything that they need, Lord God, that you would lift them out of that situation, out of that circumstance, Lord God, and that you would provide, Lord. Father, we put a stop in Jesus' name to every predatory lending practice, every predatory creditor, Lord God, that keeps people in those places, Lord. Father, we ask, God, that you would bless and keep, Lord, those who are in need, God. We pray for the abused and the mistreated in our community, the people that nobody knows about. Father, you know about them, Lord, and we just ask that you would bring justice to them in Jesus' name, that you would set them free, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for, the, for, for kids that have been human trafficked, Lord, out of our communities, God, and we ask that you would shut down the pipeline in Jesus' name. We ask right now in Jesus' name that you'd bring these little kids home, Lord God, and we ask, Lord, that you would put up a hedge of protection around every child in our communities, Lord, that you would protect them, you'd send angels, Lord God, to protect them and keep them safe, Lord God. Lord, that there, that there be a stop put to that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for our community. We ask that you would bless it, Lord, that you would bless it, God, that you would use each of us to reach and to love and to care for the people around us, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Number four is we pray for our nation that God would raise up righteous judges and leaders, that God would bless and lead our current 
leaders. So Father, we just lift up our nation to you right now, Lord God, we come before you. Lord, and we say our nation needs you, Lord God. Our nation needs you, Lord Jesus. And we ask, God, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done in America, Lord God. That you would use our nation, Lord. God, that you would use our nation, Lord. Let it be a standard of righteousness, God. Lord, I'm asking that you would raise up righteous judges and leaders, Lord, in all levels of government, Lord. In school boards, in communities, Lord God. Mayors, Lord. Um, God, in every level, Lord, we ask, God, for righteous judges and leaders, Lord God. We're asking for your blessing upon our nation, Lord God. We're asking that you would stir up repentance in our nation, that you would stir our nation to you, Lord God. And Lord, let it start in your church, Lord God, that we would become like you, Jesus, that we would love the people around us, Lord God, and we would use our influence, Lord, in our communities to bring about a change from the ground up, Lord God. Lord, we pray for our current leaders and our, uh, God, we just pray that you would bless them, Lord, and you would keep them, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you would lead them and guide them, Lord, that you would turn them to you, Lord God, that you would, um, that you would show your hand, Lord God, upon their works, Lord. God, we want them to succeed, God. I want them to succeed because they're, (laughs) they're the leaders we got. And Lord, I ask that we as a nation would succeed, Lord God, that you would lead and guide us, Lord God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And number five, pray for those who are suffering with sickness and disease. I ask that God would bring healing and strength. And so, Lord, we just ask you right now that you would bring a wave of healing, Lord God, through our church, Lord, and through our community. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit and that you would touch broken bodies and make them whole, Lord God. Lord, I ask right now, Lord, for people in this room that are in pain and hurting, Lord, I pray that you would heal them in Jesus' name, that you would remove the pain right now in Jesus' name, that you would deliver us, Lord God, out of the hand of sickness, Lord. In Jesus' name, and for those who are suffering and, and lingering pain, oh God, Lord, I ask for healing in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking for healing, Lord God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that you call us to pray. You call us to ask. And Lord, help each one of us to trust you more, to ask you, to develop a life of prayer, Lord God. Father, I thank you for every person that is here. And Lord, I pray that you would bless them and keep them. Make your face to shine upon them. Give them peace, Lord. God, we thank you. We love you. And we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's just give God some glory right now. Amen. Amen.